Good morning and welcome to Hannah United Methodist Church's online worship for July 12th, 2020. Seems hard to believe that it's been four months since we uh, last gathered together in worship. But the good news is that we're going to slowly and gradually uh, start to uh, try to uh, resume in-person worship. We're starting next Sunday, July 19th, with a prayer and communion service for uh, those who are at low risk and who are willing to covenant to uh, follow all the guidelines that we need to have in place to keep one another safe. But it's really important that we understand that at no time during these last four months has the church been closed. The church is open. We have continued to pray for each other. We have continued to be in contact with one another. And we continue to worship together, even if it is online. Yet we know, through this very difficult experience, that it's not like being in one another's presence, in the presence of God. The uh, 15th century Christian mystic, St. John of the Cross, talked about the dark night of the soul, times when God gives us challenges, that the only response to the challenge is to walk by faith, only faith. It's those times when you can't see the way ahead. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't even know if you will be able to endure what you're going through. But this is a gift from God. Even though it is a challenge, according to St. John, this is a time when God is helping us to grow in our faith, to learn to walk by faith alone. I pray that this time has been, is, and will be a time where you have learned to cultivate the eyes of faith, the heart of faith, and the mind of faith, to walk by faith knowing that God is with us. And God has given us this opportunity. God has not given us the virus or the pandemic, but God has placed us in this time, in this situation, so that we can be a witness to Jesus Christ. And we can do that by holding on to our faith, holding on to one another, and knowing that God is with us and guiding us, and that We are as strong as ever. Perhaps as we have walked by faith, we have spent some time, and if you haven't, I invite you in this coming week to think about what is the church? What is the purpose of the church? I believe the purpose of the church is to sustain the faithful so that they can go out into the world and live as Christ's ambassadors, bringing the good news of Jesus Christ into every situation. Surely we are in a situation. Let us be fed through this worship so that we can exist in this pandemic as a witness of walking in faith. Amen. Now, hear these words of encouragement from the book of Romans, the 8th chapter. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, Graciously give us all things. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword, or pandemic. 
as it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that is ours in Christ Jesus our Lord. For the next three weeks, our worship series is titled, Nothing Can Separate Us. For the next three weeks, through all of our worship, we will be focused on God's sustaining grace and how we can maintain our connection to that. And as we have not been meeting in person, it may have been much more difficult than usual to maintain that connection. But if we're honest with ourselves, we know that maintaining that connection has always been a bit of a challenge. Indeed, it's not the things out there that threaten our ability to walk by faith. But it's the things in here. The things in here. So, we will trust God in this dark night of the soul. That God's work in us is to strengthen our faith. And to set our minds on Christ and in walking the ways that he walked. And we will be sustained, we will be nurtured, we will grow, and we will be more powerful witnesses for Jesus Christ because of the challenge of this situation. So be encouraged. God is with us. God has a plan. And we are living that plan. Amen. And now let us open our worship with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, strengthen us and sustain us in our fatigue. Give us the energy to follow in your path. Nourish us with your word and your spirit that we might not only survive this time, but that we might actually grow stronger, more faithful, have more powerful witness, and be more convinced from the depth of our heart that you indeed are our God, that your Son, Jesus Christ, gave his life for us, and that you have called us to be your people. Lord, we may indeed fall short but we know that you never do. So as we worship you today, as we give you our prayers, as we lift up our voices, as we hear your word, may all of these things transform us into the full measure of the stature of Christ, that we might honor you and serve you and serve our neighbor as you would have us to do so, walking by faith even in the dark. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let us now sing our opening hymn, O Spirit of the Living God.
Now let us bring to the Lord those concerns that are on our hearts and the hearts of those connected to us in our community. Let us remember in particular this week that we pray for Tom, Mike, Dick, Barb, Don, Sandy, Susie, Cliff, Bill, Roger, Greg, Beth, and Gloria. Each of these in their own way needs to be surrounded by the healing love of Christ and sustained by the Holy Spirit. Let our prayers reach them, comfort them, and assure them that even in times of illness, sickness, worry, concern, family, financial, job issues, that God is always with us, that God is always present, and that God is always sustaining, nourishing, filling us with the life and spirit of Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather on this day, we give you thanks. We thank you for all of your blessings. We thank you for the blessing of your love and grace. We thank you for the blessing of community. And we thank you, Lord, for giving us hearts, hearts that are not hearts of stone, but hearts of flesh, that lead us to be able to feel for one another, to bear one another's burdens, to ache when those around us ache to cry when those around us are forlorn, and to have strength when those around us are weak. And Lord, when we are the ones crying in pain and weak, we thank you, Lord, for the gift of the community that shows your sustaining love to us through acts, through words, through prayers, and through presence. Remind us, Lord, that just as we seek to comfort one another, we are also called to bring comfort into the world, to speak hope and love and mercy and grace when the world is yelling quite opposite things. You call us, Lord, to bring good news into the world, the good news of your grace through Jesus Christ. May we, Lord, always look for the good news in all situations. And Lord, may we be the actual presence of your good news in our homes, in our community, in our church, in our workplaces, and everywhere that we go. For right now, Lord, we know that the world is so very focused on all the bad news. Help us, Lord, to be the people who remind the world that in spite of the reality of the bad news, your reality far outweighs, far exceeds, your reality defeats all of the bad news with the good news. Help us, Lord, to keep focused on the good news, on the hope, and help us, Lord, to be the people who proclaim hope in the world. Forgive us for those times when we participate in the bad news. Forgive us for those times when we, in fact, are the bad news. But we thank you, Lord, so much for your mercy and your grace. And we thank you, Lord, that you always receive us whenever we turn again to you. And so today we turn again to you. We turn again to Christ and we follow him. We will walk in his way, falteringly, failingly, stumbling, but we will walk in the way of Christ. And to sustain us in that way, we will gather in whatever way that we can as the church that sustains each other by proclaiming to each other the good news of Jesus Christ, by encouraging one another, by teaching one another, and by always pointing to you and your son Christ. And so to sustain one another now. We will join our voices together and pray with one voice that prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now listen for the word of God. Through the words of Paul in his letter to Romans, from the 8th chapter, verses 1 to 11. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his Spirit who lives in you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, your word is a lamp unto our feet. May we walk by your light, shine your light on our path, that we may see where you would have us to go. But Lord, even in the dark, may we learn to walk by faith so that we neither stumble nor stray. But when we do stumble and stray, we pray, Lord, that we have our hearts fixed firmly on the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ, knowing that in all of our sin and failure, he has forgiven us, and he restores us to right paths. So help us now, Lord, to see your light, to walk in that way and to hear your word that we might truly be your people transformed by your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. So as I said earlier, we are beginning a new worship series, Nothing Can Separate Us. And I'm sure we have all felt a bit of separateness in this time of social isolation. Hopefully, we haven't felt isolated or separate from God. But at the very least, we don't get to experience God in the way that we are accustomed to. We don't get to experience one another in the way that we are accustomed to. And we so crave one another's faces. We so crave being in each other's presence. We so miss 
the face-to-face connection that we have had. But nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And as the body of Christ, that means that nothing can separate us from one another. may become a little more challenging. We may have to exercise some more faith, some more trust. We may have to move outside of our comfort zone. That's hard for me, I'll tell you. But nothing can separate us. But to remain in that tight connection with Christ and one another, we do have to do some maintenance on our part. We do have to walk by faith, walk by the Spirit. And so today, we're looking at the beginning of Romans chapter 8, and Paul's word to the Romans and to us, to pay attention to what we have our mind set on. Now, now when Paul begins this 8th chapter, he says, therefore, there is now no condemnation. Well, Therefore, because of what? We have to back up to the last verse of the seventh chapter, even a little bit further. Paul has just said that rather famous statement, the good that I want to do, I don't do. And the evil that I don't want to do, that's what I keep on doing. Paul is sharing with us the reality of the life in the flesh for a Christian. For we desire to do good and to please God. In our heart, in our heart, we seek God. But in our flesh, we keep getting in our own way. We keep stumbling and tripping and hurting others and having things in our hearts that God would not want us to have in there. And Paul shared this. So the very last words of the seventh chapter, Paul says, So then I myself, in my mind, am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. And therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because he did for us what we cannot do for ourselves. There is no condemnation. Well, that's really good news. That means for all of those times when we're living in the nature of our flesh, we're not condemned. God has forgiven us. And that is indeed something to be so grateful for, so thankful for, and to give God praise. But just as Paul struggled, we too must struggle with our natural flesh, with our natural desires, with the things that we set our minds on. In uh, verse 5 of the 8th chapter, Paul says, Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. Flesh and Spirit. We talked about this last week. And it's all too easy to fall into the comfortable thinking that what the flesh desires is sins that involve the body. Immorality. Gluttony, drunkenness, pampering oneself beyond measure. But as we saw last week, the sins of the flesh are not so much about physical pleasure as they are about satisfying what is in our heart. And so when we value our own opinion, our own ideas above other people, then we are living by the flesh. Because that's what our flesh desires. Our flesh desires to be right. Our flesh desires to be vindicated. 
Our flesh desires the comfort of being around people who think and look and act just like we do. But the Spirit desires love. The Spirit desires a connection with others. The Spirit desires forgiveness and mercy and grace. The Spirit desires transformative relationships. The Spirit desires our fleshly desires to be put to death through baptism, through our baptism, and that we be born again into a new creation through Christ. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't things in the world that are wrong. That doesn't mean that we should not call out those things that are against God's will, against God's law. But it does mean that we are to do so with a heart of spirit rather than a heart of flesh. That can be very, very difficult. I know, I love to be right. And when somebody argues with me, there's this little, little thing that comes up, maybe two little things that come up, like horns in the back of my head. Because my flesh will desire to prove that I am right at the expense of somebody else's spirit. I want to beat them into submission. Oh, not physically, but with reasoned arguments and words. And, and we need reasoned arguments and words to convey with one another what we have learned of God's Spirit. But when the purpose of the arguments and the reasoning and the words is to build ourselves up and to put somebody else down until they comply, we are missing the point. Because God does not ask us to correct people's wrongs. God asks us to proclaim to them good news. God asks us to share with them our story. And God asks us to lead them to life, to joy, by surrendering their lives to Jesus Christ. But that can be so difficult. And like Paul, we likely find ourselves doing more harm than our hearts really want. Because we don't know how. Because our mind is so often set on the desires of the flesh. The desire to be right. The desire to have the world look the way we would feel comfortable in it. But God has not called us into this world to be comfortable He's called us to have a peace that passes understanding, but not necessarily to have a peace that is the absence of conflict, the absence of tension, the absence of the difficult work of repentance and of taking a good hard look at our own lives and our own hearts. This can show itself in ways beyond arguing with other people. It can show itself in the very way we experience life. My mom, and I'll say bless her heart, is an awfulizer. I've probably mentioned this before. But her tendency throughout my life has been anything that was an unexpected hiccup, a challenge, a difficulty, was the most awful thing that ever could happen. She took it all so much to heart. And she worried and fretted and panicked and sometimes just outside of all reason kind of lost it. My mom, a deeply Christian woman, but the desire of her flesh was to have everything go smoothly. But the desire of her spirit would be to have the grace to handle whatever life threw at her. But in those challenging moments, 
she found it hard to get right to that grace. So wrapped up in the fears of her flesh. I can't tell you how many times my mother told me, oh, your life is ruined, what are you going to do? Yeah, I was going through some challenging times, some difficult things. Who hasn't? But through each one of those challenges, even though there was a lot of hard work, a lot of painful self-reflection, through all of it, the Spirit of God was with me. Christ was walking with me. The Spirit was sustaining me. And even though there were hard things that I had to face about myself, about my life, about the choices I may have made, or just about the randomness in the world that I have no control over. But it wasn't awful. It was hard. But it was every single time a blessing. A blessing because it would put me on my knees. A blessing because in the end I would learn again and again and again that God's grace is sufficient. Now, I'll tell you, I, I was not a notorious sinner. In fact, I lived very much by the law, which made it really difficult for me to accept in those times my own sinful response because I was so busy justifying my own actions, justifying my response to those actions, and justifying the way that I felt about them. But the thing is, when I justify myself, that's all I've got. But when I surrender to the Spirit, to the Spirit of Christ, then I don't need to justify myself, for Christ has already justified me. In this time of pandemic, we all have our fears, our concerns, things that we don't like, things that we don't trust. We all wonder, what should we do? How should our response look? Are we doing the right thing? What's going to happen? What if, what if, what if? Well, what if in this time we set our minds on the Spirit and trusted God that we can indeed walk in this darkness, that we can indeed love one another, that we can indeed be a witness in the world to the grace and mercy of God through Jesus Christ. God is not the cause of our difficulty, but in our difficulty, God is ever present with us. If we set our minds on God, I'm absolutely convinced that he has a wonderful, powerful, uplifting mission for us to do. To be the church, the church of Jesus Christ, in a way that touches people's lives in a way that perhaps we never could before. As we, for a short time yet, remain isolated and separate. Take this time to set your mind on the Spirit and listen to God for where and how he will lead you and us. Amen. To live the call this week, I'm going to use as an example my preaching professor when in seminary, Dr. Brooks. Dr. Brooks was a wonderful, powerfully spirit-led woman uh, from Trinidad, so her, her accent was hard to understand sometimes, but she was a force to be reckoned with. And if you were on her bad side, there would be good reason to be afraid of her. Thank the Lord I remained on her good side. As all of her babies, she called her students, well, Dr. Brooks, her whole teaching on preaching, which was quite detailed and involved, boiled down to 
to one thing. Always, always, always look for the good news in every passage of Scripture. Look for the good news in every situation in life because Dr. Brooks knew in her heart that God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is with us all the time. And so in everything, there is good news. In preaching, we preach the good news. In living, we live the good news. And in challenging times, when it may be hard to see how this is good news, we pray for God to show us the good news. Because it is always good news in whatever bad news is in the world, in the flesh. The Spirit is good news. So for living the call this week, look for the good news. In every situation that makes you shake your head, that makes your heart sink, that worries you, that frustrates you, that angers you, every situation that gets a response of the flesh, Look for the good news. I don't guarantee you that the good news is there. The word of God guarantees us that the good news is there. And the word of God from our scripture today reassures us that there is nothing in this world more powerful than the spirit from our word of encouragement today. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Every situation, every tragedy, every difficulty that we face, everything that we hate in the world is a place where God is already at work. God's grace, his prevenient grace, is being poured out on those people on those situations, on those places. Our task this week is to be a witness to the good news of Jesus Christ in all places because he has already defeated the flesh. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Praise be to God. Amen. Let us pray. God of grace and forgiveness, we give you thanks for the gift of Christ and the gift of new life that you are constantly working in us and through us. Empower us to be the spirit directed in all we do and all we say. In the name of Christ, by the power of his spirit, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. And now let us sing our closing hymn, I Am Thine, O Lord.
forth about your week, go in the Spirit. Go with the Spirit. Be the presence of the body of Christ in all the dark situations in the world. And always seek the good news in the midst of all the bad news. And not only seek it, but proclaim it, point it out, and share it. Because this world needs a lot of good news. But there's no shortage of good news. Because God is with us. In Jesus Christ. Emmanuel. So go into the world. In the name of the Father. And the Son. And the Holy Spirit. Seeking. Naming. Proclaiming. And living the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen.